Thank you. Kevin believed in those songs. As most of you know, Kevin is our eldest son. A lady asked me this morning if he was, and I thought, well, maybe someone else did not know that. He's just like his mother. They can't say anything. I'm up here right now. No, he's more like me, I think. There is a sure way to heaven, and I want to share that with you this morning. Second Peter chapter 1, if you'd like to turn there, we'll begin there very shortly. Man likes a sure thing. If you buy an automobile, most people want to get the 100,000 mile warranty. They're covered on everything, home insurance, car, truck insurance, the big boy toys. Know the difference between a boy and a man? Size of toys. So it, it's amazing. Uh, people used to walk and go places, and now they have something to carry them there. That's good. You get there quicker. But there's a sure way to heaven. Are you covered there? Tonight, this evening, we're going to look at how to overcome Satan. If you want to read ahead, go to James chapter 4. Begin verse 1, go down about verse 12. And it tells us there, this is the best book that you'll ever read on anything that may be bothering you. Because it's God speaking. It's not man. And God created man, therefore he is superior to man. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, we begin with what is called the Christian graces. In 2 Peter 3.18, Peter says, <clears throat> grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 3.16, he says, men rest with the scriptures to their own destruction. Twist. Actually, in the original, it's like twisting the arm and it comes out the joint. Twist. Create to their own destruction. And then Peter says in that verse 18, you grow, and he's wanting them to grow because they didn't have what we have this morning. It's known as an Old and New Testament. And besides all this, add, give diligence. The word diligence means work, hard, difficult. It is work in studying the Bible. Some people use their brain, some preachers, more on Sunday than some people do in six months. You just think about intensified study. Just think about the scriptures that are memorized and the knowledge that comes from studying. And of course, as you get older, that's very important that you use this or you lose it. And I'm losing enough for that. You know, I don't know how I'd be if I wasn't studying the Bible. Give all diligence, full cooperation with God, and add to your faith. What is faith? Faith is the victory, some say. That's true. Hebrews 11 clearly tells us what it is. It is, faith is the evidence, the assurance of things not seen. But those things are going to come to pass. Faith is convictions. Faith is belief. A lot of times in the book of Romans, when it says faith, it means gospel. For it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to him must believe that he is. Hebrews 11, verse 6. I must believe that there's a God. I must believe all things, as we said this morning, work good for my maturation of there are situational things in life in which happen to us, and then there's the maturational things. It is in the growing process of human beings. And there's all the different stages we go through, from the cradle to the grave, some say, but oh, it's a difficult thing to study all those. And it's needed because we must help people with their problems. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to me except by 
to the Father. I cannot come to God in another man's name this morning or thinking I can go before a man and bow before him and kiss his ring that he'll forgive me. He does not have the power to forgive. That's right. If that's the case, then Jesus died in vain. But he didn't die in vain because Jesus is that mediator for us. He's the one that came in our stead. No one else. Only Jesus. And he died for you. You're special. You're made in his image and likeness of God. That word in the Hebrew means spitting image. Boy, you're just the spitting image of your daddy. You ever heard that? Oh, well, yes. People don't use that anymore. We've got all dignified and sanctified. No, we don't use those words anymore. I grew up in the country. We still use those words. That just means you look a lot like your dad. The basis of Christian belief. Then you uh, go from faith to virtue. Virtue, that's moral courage. The natural fruits of trusting in God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now watch this. Lean not on thy own understanding. Acknowledge him, him in all his ways, and he'll direct your footsteps. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Now listen to that. Trust, have faith in God. In everything. Well, God, God hadn't answered my prayer. God, this God. Lean not on your understanding. I'm look back over my life. I was talking to one of the brothers this morning. And I can see God in my life that I used to not see him there when I was younger. But now that my life's getting closer and closer to uh, the twilight years, that I can look back and see he was there. He had a plan. He had a plan for giving me a special woman right up here. There's no doubt about that. And he has a plan for you. He has a plan for everyone in our lives. But we can derail that plan by just not seeking God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him when he is near. Isaiah said, Isaiah 55, 6 through 8. My ways are not man's ways, for my thoughts are higher than the heavens. I am God. That's what he's saying. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. You don't own anything. Psalms 24. Psalms 50. If I was hungry, I would not ask thee. The world is mine and the fullness thereof. But he created it for us. It's beautiful. And we got to have all these people that they don't like progress. They want to do something else with the property. Well, if you don't get... If you don't catch up with progress, and if you don't stay up with progress, you'll get left in the dust. Because, especially in this age, I remember the first computer that was brought to me in my office years ago. I didn't know one thing about it. But I got a good education in it from our daughter, right? Quick life. Knowledge, more courage, and then knowledge. How does knowledge come? Simple, the Bible tells us. You do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. Jesus told a bunch of scribes that. You do make error in handling the scriptures, and you don't know God. That's what he's saying. There's going to be a lot of lost religious people on judgment morning. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven for many, shall say to me on that day, Lord, in other words, paraphrase, look what I've done, Lord. And he'll profess unto them, I, I know you not. A lot of religious people. You know, I've met a lot of religious people that would really like to instruct you, instruct me how to preach. And I hadn't found one of them yet to preach this. How much attention did I pay that? Zero. Now, if a brother comes to me with constructive criticism, yeah, I'll listen to that, but telling me how to preach? I told one lady one time, just get up my sermon, I'll preach it next Sunday. She said, I can't do that. Well, you know, the Bible says we shouldn't do that. I shouldn't criticize you for trying. And I'm still trying. I'm a 45th year. Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free to his disciples. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. We go to school, and some of you are school teachers, and some of you are in college, and you'll take a course like some I've taught over the years, Bible, psychology, sociology, counseling, whatever. 
and you have to have a book. That book instructs you, and it, you're are responsible for for in that book and for the lecture. The greatest book sometimes is never open. Back years, many years ago, when country was country, there was an old song speaking about Mother's Bible on the table. Back in those days, we, we studied. I wouldn't ask if I wanted to go to church when I was 16. I knew to go. Acts 17 11, the Bereans were noble and more noble than the Thessalonians, our own brethren, and that they searched the scripture how often? Daily. Daily. Daily in the temple and from house to house they ceased not to teach Christ. Acts 5 42. To the lost. So we have knowledge. He that rejecteth me and my word, the same shall judge him in the last day. John 12 48. Those that reject God's word, those that teach error, they're going to be lost. Now, Brother Frank, you shouldn't say that. John 12, 48, Jesus said, okay? To those that don't obey the gospel, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10, vengeance is going to be taken upon them by the Godhead. And they're going to be lost. Those that are erring members are going to be lost. Now, wait a minute. They're Christians. They're erring Christians. In 2 Peter 2, 20 through 25, Peter talks about that. It, better, it would have been better if I had never known the Lord. And he goes on to say it's like a dog returned to his own vomit and an old sow to wallowing in the mire. Now you can take an old sow and you make her a show pig, clean her up, and I know this for sure. And she'll return to the wallowing in the mire. You know what that is? How dreadful and how ugly Sin is. And the Lord says, it had been better if you'd never known. To know the holy commandment and turn from it. It is a true proverb that the dog and the sow. And a dog will do that. Dog's a dog. It amazes me today we take dogs and we crossbreed them and we settle them for thousands of dollars. You know what those dogs were called when I was a kid? Curs. You know what they mean by that? Half breeds. You didn't have a half breed uh, rabbit dog. You had a full blooded beagle. And you know, that's that's how times have changed, but that's people's business. Are some of us like the Israelites? We have a zeal of God, but not knowledge. Which would you rather have? Knowledge without zeal, or zeal without knowledge. Don't make any difference. One is barren. Both of them are barren if you don't have the right attitude about it. And then Romans 9, 3, Paul says, I wish that myself were a curse, an anthema. King James says it means a curse. Cut off from the Lord if my brethren would be, the flesh would be saved. Now, man, he loved lost souls, didn't he? He did. Paul was a unique person. How great all those apostles were. But they were not greater than Jesus Christ nor God, nor the Holy Spirit. They were vessels used to take the gospel. And we need to be like that today. Temperance. I can't control my temper. Well, you need help before you meet the right person that controls you for it. I have a chip on my shoulder. Come here and knock it off. Okay. There's people out there that will knock it off. I'm so bad that the grass, I've heard kids say this over the years, but I walk on dice. You had not met the right person yet. You needed a mother like I did. She'd beat that, I mean, she'd whip that out of you. I can't control my temper. That means I sin. Be angry, sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath, and give no place to the devil. Look at anger, look at wrath. You lose self-control. There are some people that have... Uh, mental health issues that lose control and they don't realize what they're doing. And then there are some people just as normal as some of us today that take certain things and put it into the bodies and they become abnormal. And they don't know what they're doing. And there's no control for that. Unless they're put away. Godliness. Wait a minute. Patience. I've got to get that one. That's something I've worked on 
for a long time. I've been told that by my sweet wife. You need more patience. I do. But see, I'm not perfect yet. But you know what? We're going to be just like Jesus someday. Now, I've seen people over the years look at me like I'm a crazy when I say that. Well, let's see if that's right. For our citizenship is in heaven, from whence we look for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies and fashion our vile bodies like unto his glorious body. Oh, won't that be a beautiful day? Heaven will surely be worth it all. It's a beautiful place. Through the gospel, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things was prepared for the Lord. Now some go right and talk about heaven. Now let's talk about the gospel. But these things are made known to us through and by the gospel. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Endurance is patience. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Matthew 24, verse 35. Godliness. Godlikeness. Over the years, I've witnessed the people that when they come to the assembly, oh man, you see the best side. And during the week, you hear the worst side. Let me tell you what I've practiced over the years, and I was told this uh, and taught this by an elder at St. Louis. If you make a statement to me about a person, let's go see that person. Let's correct that. Oh, I'm not going, but don't tell me to. And that's tough doing that, but I'll stop that. I had one elder just write it down. Had a, she said, wait a minute. I had a little, one of those little spiral notebooks, small one. He said, come on, let's go see this person. If not, he wouldn't have seen the person. I told him, you said that. And it needs to be worked out. Godness, reverence, and conduct. Brotherly kindness. Galatians 16. Wherefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, and especially those of our household of faith, our brethren and our sisters. Some people have a two-inch fuse, and it's just about spewed out right now. At the drop of the hat, you need to work on that. That's a bad example of a Christian. And if you do that, take care of it. And if you can't stop that by reading the Bible, oh, talk to me, I'll, see, I'll tell you who to go talk to. Sometimes we as Christians have to go to doctors that have studied the body inside and out. There's nothing wrong with that to live a normal life. You're not responsible for that sometimes. But I'm tired of hearing people say, well, I can't help that because of my past. Oh, yes, you can. That has to be broke somewhere. I broke the cycle in our family, on my side of the family, my dad's side, of drinking. I've seen what all that will lead to. It's not good. Barren or unfruitful. The axe is laid under the tree. Every tree that bringeth forth not true is cut down and cast into the fire. We used to visit Florida a lot in the 70s. Linda's father lived there. He passed away in 79. And we'd go through those beautiful orange, uh, uh, orange uh, groves out there. And you didn't see a dead tree in the middle of all those beautiful trees. Why? A dead tree is useless. He's using us to say if I don't bear fruit, I'm useless. He called one man a slothful, good-for-nothing servant. Now, that doesn't mean that I have to stand in the pulpit. That doesn't mean that I have to do a lot of things, but it does mean that I need to find my talent, and what is it? Can I call other people? See, personal evangelism covers a wide spectrum. Now, here's the thing about personal evangelism. You can check it. I have a chart on it somewhere. It's not radio programs, TV programs. It's not gospel meetings. And on and on you can go. You know what it is? One-on-one -on -one friendship evangelism. That's the best way today at work, at play, wherever you are to convert people. I remember going into homes of people. Linda and I went into a place one time in Oklahoma, Mississippi. had 11 people in there. We taught 11 people, baptized four. 
brotherly kindness, barren, unfruitful. I'm unfruitful in the Lord's service. We don't need to be that way. We need to grow thereby. In verse 9, he clearly says, it says for but he that who does not these things is blind, our short-sightedness, and cannot see afar off, and forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. I'm here this morning because of this lady. <clears throat> I grew up <clears throat> in the presence of three denominational preachers, and I loved the ground they walked on. My dad had a lot of issues, and I won't go into that, but I followed those men. Who'd ever thought, who'd ever thought that I'd obeyed the gospel? My uncle hated gospel. Church of Christ people. Called us Camelites. You know what? A lot of people have open minds. They'll obey the truth when they see it. I used to ride around my uncle in an old 50 Hudson with an old Victrola just to get him. And I remember those. I really do. But, you know, Linda was kind of mean to me. She, I said, this uncle does all the marrying in our family. She says, he's not marrying us. I will, sometime I'll preach a lesson like that and tell you what went on when, when I, before I obeyed the gospel. If you do these things, you'll never fall or stumble. Add to faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, love, charity. If you don't do them, you're right opposite. You'll never fall. Wherefore, let him think of these and take heed, lest he fall. We all need one another. We all need fellowship. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a trespass, a fall, ye which are spiritual, go to him. Bring him back. James says you covered his sins, not yours. James 5, 16, in that context. Affection and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Pray, pray, pray. Well, I prayed and nothing happened. Have patience. Be patient and wait on the Lord because he knows what's best for you. You'll never fall. And then, look at verse 11. That's so misused. Some say, if I just barely make it by the skin of my teeth, if I just walk through the gate, old St. Peter, St. Peter's not going to be standing at the gate. There's no, there's no way. And it just bumps me and I get in. No, this says you're going in abundantly if you do these things. Far be, shall be administered unto you. Abundantly. Abundantly. That's overwhelming. That's not minute. It's large. And you'll know before time. Do you know this morning that you're saved? Some people say you can't know that. I hope. No, you don't hope. You can know. First John 5 says that. It says we can know that we're saved. If you're not saved this morning, you're not a Christian, I'm going to tell you something through love. And you have Christian loved ones. You're not going to see them. You need to obey the gospel now. Behold, today is the step of the time. Behold, today is the day of salvation for us. 2 Corinthians 6, 2. It's simple. Believe faith. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized. He didn't say he is baptized without faith to be saved. No more than he said, he that believes is saved. Baptism and faith and baptism saved. And the Lord added you to his church, Acts 2, 47. Then Acts 2, 41 said, those that gladly received his work were baptized the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Some people hear, but they do not accept the gospel. Then if you're an error member, if you had not been faithful to the Lord, do you need the prayers of the church? Yes, you do. Now here's one thing for sure. Heaven's going to surely be worth it all. But there's conditions in this book where the I make it, you make it, that I must meet after I become a child of God. You're subject to Him anyway. Will you please?